If the fossil fuel industry has anything to do with it whatsoever, then, then this new nano flow cell electric car, which is sort of electric and sort of not, could actually be a thing. This is the first nano flow cell car that I've ever seen. It's a new concept. And the company making them plans to make them in the United States, and they think that they're going to be a winner. Are they right? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in to the channel. It's great to see you. Happy New Year, 2023. It's going to be an incredible year. But with new technology coming out almost every day, it's sort of hard to work out what's a winner and what's not. So let's have a look at this new technology. Nano Flow Cell wants to sell flow battery cars in the US. Flow battery cars. This is a thing that I don't think anyone I've met knows about. It's quite an interesting idea. Like I said, even though this is technically an EV, I think the fossil fuel industry will look at this and go, yes, that's a winner. Make these. Let's campaign to have these manufactured. Now, NanoFlow Cell is a European company that Clean Technica say are headquartered in London focusing on flow battery technology. Flow batteries are, well, they're an interesting idea. Very interesting. Unlike lithium batteries or fuel cells, they store electricity in two liquid chambers separated by a membrane. They hold huge amounts of potential, say the company and Clean Technica, for low cost environmentally friendly energy storage because the basic materials are cheap and abundant. To add capacity, simply make the tanks larger. It's that easy. It's that simple, they say. But is it really? Hmm. While that makes flow batteries work very well for energy storage, which they are pretty good. I don't think they're the solution. I think sodium batteries are better, but they're still pretty good. It's a totally different concept to make this work in an electric car. Their size and weight for that for one reason, it's challenging because they're for their size and weight. They're heavier than lithium ion batteries. Now that hasn't stopped Nano Flow Cell from designing a number of vehicles that they plan to produce over the past 10 years and introduced and showing them to the public at the Geneva Auto Show. Its latest concept is called the Quantino 25, and it's a, basically a 2 plus 2 sports car. So what exactly is this thing? Well, what makes the NanoFlow cell ecosystem work is an electrically charged fluid called bi-ion, derived from seawater or reclaimed wastewater. It works similar to the way that hydrogen works in conjunction with a fuel cell. Pump hydrogen in, run it through a fuel cell, and get electricity out. With the Quantino 25, the company calls, which the company says is a sports car, you can you pump two liquids to the membrane interface to make electricity. Basically, you gotta pump two liquids into the car. Once that liquid has run out, you drive to your nearest station, you pump new liquids into the vehicle, which will then essentially charge your battery, sort of like that. Now there's two 33 gallon tanks, which are pretty big in size. When you think about that, Aussies, people in the UK, people in New Zealand, people in you know the, the parts of the world where we use liters, about 33 gallons is around about 120 liters. And there's two of them. That means about 240 liters are needed. You can imagine that's an incredible amount of weight. However, these tanks are mounted low in the vehicle like in a normal electric car. You fill up your buy ion or your let's just call it your buy gasoline and you have a car that will dash to zero and you have a car that will do zero to 62 miles an hour or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in only 2.5 seconds now to be fair there's a lot of evs that will do that pace now so it's not exactly a novel concept that it can go that fast now the reason it can do that speed is because it has electric motors it has four electric motors each of those motors has 80 horsepower each meaning the vehicle has a total of about 300 and 20 horsepower, meaning their claims from 0 to 62 in 2.5 seconds seem, to be honest, absolutely preposterous and highly unlikely considering the immense weight of this vehicle. It's underpowered compared to pretty much every electric car that can do that speed 
doesn't seem feasible unless it has some sort of other magic. Maybe it's got a back to the future button. You press it and you, you go to, yeah. Anyway, here's the part that is even crazier. The company says the Quantino 25 has a range of 1,200 miles. Uh, that's nearly 2,000 kilometers. That would make it the longest range vehicle in the world that you can buy, production vehicle, the longest range production vehicle in the world. And most certainly the longest range quasi EV. When I say quasi EV, well, it's not really an EV if you've got to pump liquids in it, is it? I don't think it is. Now, the water in this vehicle weighs around eight pounds per gallon. So the fuel to travel to 1,200 miles actually weighs 528 pounds or about 240 kilos. Yeah, I told you it's heavy. That's just the weight of the fuel. A conventional lithium-ion battery pack with this cooling apparatus can travel that far. Now, a conventional lithium-ion battery pack would probably weigh around double to get that range. But nobody really fully knows how this vehicle works. Now, the Quantino 25 is not yet a production car, and very few people have even driven one of these. But the range versus weight ratio of this car is still not too bad. Now that said, Autocar have actually driven a prototype all the way back in 2016 in Switzerland. They said it was a real drivable car. It works and it actually could happen. In fact, that same test vehicle has now done more than 400,000 kilometers or around 250 miles. So it works and it works for a long distance. Now the vehicle's engineers have said that it's been in operation now for more than 10,000 hours and it shows no damage to the vehicle in terms of battery degradation or degradation of the fuel system whatsoever. The company says it wants to offer its flow battery technology to EV manufacturers and give the system a 50,000 hour guarantee. That translates to well over 1 million miles of driving or a 1 million mile warranty. That's pretty impressive. The problem, while there are no buy ion refueling infrastructure stations in the United States. Now, Clean Technica just says that that doesn't mean someday there couldn't be. And I'm sorry, Clean Technica, you're 100% flat out wrong. There won't be. Now, why do I say that? Well, the person who invented the technology that we use today for hydrogen refueling stations and hydrogen cars actually said hydrogen cars won't work for various reasons, including refueling them. And it's the same with this. Why would you do this? Refuel this vehicle at, say, one of a handful of stations when they ever get built, if they ever did, when you can just charge EV at home or on the thousands of charges being installed basically every single week. Now, Clean Technica counters this by saying, hey, hang on, Tesla had no supercharger network when it first started either. And things that turned out reasonably well for Musk and company. But the thing is, well, every homeowner had power points so they could charge their EV, well, anywhere. Houses, hotels, schools, uh, supermarkets. You don't need to supercharge your car to charge it. You can charge it at a slow pace. In fact, I do that all the time with mine. Works perfectly fine. But if I had one of these at home, how would I fuel it? I couldn't. However, Nanoflow Cell announced this week that it has established a new division based in New York to bring its flow battery technology to America. The mission of the new division is to adapt the Nanoflow Cell process to US specific applications and develop Nanoflow Cell applications in the United States, basically to get this concept off the ground in the US and get a few suckers buying one. Priority one, they say, is beginning serious production of flow battery vehicles, as well as the construction of a large scale buy ion production facility that will provide transportable renewable energy for nano flow cell applications. Now, I'm going to guess that Shell, BP, Chevron Mobile, Mobile, you know, those guys are probably going to back this business and start building out stations in the hope that um, we all use them. And the United States government and everyone else, you know, most governments around the world probably put a bit of funding towards it. You know, because why not? Why shouldn't we keep these oil companies in business? Now, I say that tongue in cheek because that's what's happened with the hydrogen situation. Still, governments all around the world are investing billions of dollars into something that I don't believe will ever take off. But I could be wrong. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Now, the bioline electrolyte is a high density energy carrier that makes renewable energy storable and transportable in large quantities, they say. 
The company says it will produce the energy carrier by ion from 100% renewable energy. But of course, that's what hydrogen manufacturers say right now, and about 98% of the world's hydrogen is not made with renewable energy. Flow cell energy technology is an important solution to substantially reduce global greenhouse gas emissions as laid out in the Paris Agreement, the company says. Its many benefits include being a safe and clean energy source for many energy intensive processes and transportation services. I'm not really sure what those are. That's what they say. Our nano flow cell and bi-ion energy carrier are key technologies for a successful energy transition, says the company's CEO. We need to make energy from renewable energy safe, storable, and transportable to drive environmentally sustainable economic growth. And yeah, they claim that they're going to do this in the USA by, um, I don't know, getting people to drive these things and consume this uh, this liquid. So is it expensive? While the production costs of bi-ion fuel are directly linked to the cost of electricity from renewable sources, with the accelerated expansion of renewable energy under the Inflation Reduction Act, Clean Technica says that nano flow cell expects the cost of electricity from solar power to be relatively low in the future, which will further strengthen the competitiveness of energy sources such as bi-ion. But at the same time, the cheaper that renewable energy is, the cheaper it is to simply run an EV and not worry about having to refill it at uh, a couple of stations, wherever they may be. With the Inflation Reduction Act, the US has made the largest investment in clean energy in US history. And the potential implications for renewable energy are far reaching, says the CEO. Now, nano flow cell is more than electric cars. They want to get into grid scale energy storage and a bunch of other things. The truth is that um, I think they want to just take advantage of potentially some United States incentives for the renewable energy sector. Because lots of companies like this have popped up in the US over the past few months claiming to be the solution the world's next great solution to the energy crisis, to the global carbon crisis. And yes, do we have a crisis? Yes, we do. Is this the solution? Of course not. It's ridiculous. In fact, it's laughable that these kinds of articles are being published. And I wonder who is paying for this kind of stuff? Who is paying for the dissemination of this content? And realistically, I have to question why people would take this even remotely seriously. Seriously, think about this. Sodium batteries are being produced this year en masse at scale by the two biggest companies in the world that make the cheapest possible batteries. And they will go into EVs, into energy storage. And there's plenty of sodium. It's incredibly abundant. You don't need fuel stations. You don't need to be reliant on any fossil fuel companies. You don't be relying on a company claiming they're making their fuel out of renewable energy when you have no idea if they are or not. Personally, I'm pretty happy with the way the EV revolution is going, and I don't think this is going to make any kind of change to that. But I could be wrong on all this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.